there, this is Anton and Kasperi from Beast in Black. Mm, well, lots of work going on in the background, preparations for the headline tour, and so no time to like feel the hype. Yeah, it's coming out because I'm a practical guy in a way, like thinking always what needs to be done, what what to do, like tomorrow, the day after, next week. There's lots of things happening. So. More or less the same. Basically, the main difference was in this production the time. I had less time now. And uh, lyric wise, uh, a friend of mine, Paolo Rivaldini, helped uh, to co write, I think it was five songs, and, and one song, uh, the sixth one, was entirely his lyrics and the rest of my lyrics. So that thing and that schedule was probably the biggest difference. Well, yeah. yeah, it's it's more like in the 80s style, in my opinion, you know, a little bit more keyboard driven maybe, but there are also a couple of tracks that are maybe heavier than anything on the first album, so it's a, it's a you know, it's kind of like a mixed bag, you know, with uh, different kinds of songs, lots of variety there, but still it, it works together as a whole, at least in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, same. Like Kasper told actually today at some point that people have the tendency to categorize things and they have to always have to find, have to find some like reference points when they like get something new and they want to find something what it, it can relate to. So it's normal, like it's not like should I or should we feel like happy or not happy about it when they mention those names, it's just how it is. <laughs> yeah, people just like to have, you know, something that they can compare it to, something that they are already familiar with. So, um, of course, it makes it easier for them to just, you know, find some, you know, connection to, to some other artists or bands, you know, from the past. If you just say, okay, this reminds me of that band and this reminds me of that other band. And, you know, it's just how human mind kind of works you know it's always easier to just compare it to something that has happened or you know been there earlier so just yeah. human nature five songs are based on berserk one song is based on fist of the north star also an anime and manga from the 80s and the rest of the songs are either lyric was based on personal stuff or like fictional stuff or kind of a statement you know no surrender song it's not based on any like specific personal thing but it, that's more of a statement type of a song so what is it about as a statement well, not, not, about not giving up you know it's very corny and cliche but I just wanted to write about that this way you, know, you can actually you always write about the same things that has already been written by someone else but it's just give it you give it your own twist own touch to it the way how you feel about a certain topic about not giving up and maybe that song is also about having like hope that some people might have like some boost from that song, gives them hope, no? like, to, to fight for something they uh, find uh, important to themselves. Well, unfortunately, I don't have the track list before my eyes, but uh, well, this is war is about the band of the hawk. And, Unlimited Sin is about when this God Hand offers their deal to a person who 
as the bailiff. Um, what else? What else is there? Die by the Blade. It's about. It's kind of a psychological song, actually, even though it has a very straightforward title. It's not really about being in a battle and just fighting. It's more of a psychology thing. You know, you have some kind of a inner demon inside you, or like twin personality, or something like that, for example. What it deals with. And there's the main character in Guts who has his like inner demon, this beast of darkness. And it deals with that. His struggle with himself, with his inner self, basically. Yeah, it was great. You know, we didn't really know what to expect when we started the tour. But, you know, we were pre being treated extremely well, you know, by Nightwish and the crew. And, uh, you know, the audience also, the, the audience response was just amazing almost at every show. And, you know, we, we were just a support band, so, of course, we didn't know how it would turn out. But, you know, eventually it, w it was just great. You know, the whole, whole two, uh, six weeks that we did it was just, just amazing. You know, from start to finish, pretty much. Of course, you know it sucked that we had to, you know, uh, go home after that that whole run. But great memories, great experiences, and I hope that a lot of, you know, new people found us and you know checked checked our music out. And let's see how it will be, you know, when we start the headlining tour uh, this year. So just a great experience overall. I would say that it is just uh, the, the routine, you know, the positive routine. Uh, when we played the first couple of shows, um, like the Nostra show for, for example, of course we were a little bit nervous because we were pretty new with the whole, uh, whole set list, choreographies and stuff like that. So of course we had to think, think about every move that we made. So it wasn't, well, it, you know, there were, there were good shows but um, they were not necessarily that relaxed. And when we played the, well, let's say like, you know, most of the shows um, on the Nightwish tour and, you know, like the summer festivals and stuff, um, there was this positive routine going on. Everybody know, knew what was gonna happen. And, you know, uh, we, we didn't really have to think about it. You know, we were just there to entertain the people and, you know, it was just, just awesome. Also easier to enjoy. Yeah, when easier, you don't have to think. Exactly, exactly. Things. Because it comes when automatically, and you can really smile more and like enjoy that feeling. And yeah, it, it kind of becomes automatic, not in a negative way, but you just can just enjoy the whole whole thing, and you don't have to think, and you can just you know just enjoy the enjoy the ride. Yeah, well, for the headlining tour, of course, we will have to play longer sets. I think that it's going to be close to 90 minutes or something like that. Yeah, I think. more or less. So, so um, basically, we will have to play most of the songs from the first album and also from the new album. Um, of course, we will still think about what we can come up with, you know, just to make it inter more interesting for the audience. Maybe, you know, make some different live arrangements or just have some jams or crowd singing parts or something like that. We haven't really figured it out yet, but um, the plan is that we will practice all the songs from the new album and see how they work in a live situation. Because, of course, when you um, have the album and you record uh, songs for the album, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will work in a live situation. So uh, we will just practice all the songs and see which ones work the best and then we can just start building up the whole set list for the headlining tour. So let's see. Hopefully, probably there will be some like extra stuff that will make people like surprise. Not, not big huge surprise, but some small things, some nuances you know, for the shows. Yeah, something that makes it more interesting for the audience. Of course, we don't have uh, like a million million euro budget or anything to to put into the production, but we will just have to think about some little things here and there. And, you know how how we can make it, you know, more interesting and boost it up a little bit. 
if you had like an unlimited budget for those kinds of things, what would you like bring on stage? <laughs> I don't know, buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Eating? Uh, beer buffet. <laughs> beer buffet for everyone who is attending. Yeah, so we could share it to the audience as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not exactly. Just for us. Yeah, and a, and a giant robot. Yeah. Be beer robot. Beer robot. Yeah, beer robot. <laughs> what is a beer robot? Does it like? Oh, yeah, yeah. Does it shoot ro ro beer or something? That, <laughs> robot that is giving beer to yeah. everyone in the audience. Yeah, it yeah. has two big eyes, like like light bulbs, and his hands are like moving like this. Yeah. And beer is there, and it's always pouring like this. Yeah. Beer. <laughs> and all, of course, some kind of a like um, like Iron Maiden has Eddie, so some kind of a giant robot as well that would be walking around on stage and lots of lasers and lots of pyros and lasers and shit like that you know totally over the top yeah, <laughs> yeah. something like that <laughs>
for my blood after that. Uh, well, it was my idea, and I went to meet the director, brainstormed together, and later his, his assistant, let's say production manager, Katri, she joined also there. So the three of us were thinking, we had a WhatsApp group, and where we wrote to each other, called and met, and then it was done right, at some point. Yeah, but Based on the music, I clearly knew, okay, it has to be a very 80s music video. When you hear the song, it has this vibe. So that's why the music video is like very 80s, pink-ish, neon light stuff. Oh, well, at the moment I have one card left. Okay, oh. <laughs> I have a few more. <laughs> Do you guys also play any other games or is this like, do you do this on tour as well? This is the first time we ever played. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but during the last tour, for example, um, we just uh, went to the store and bought like uh, reissues of the old Nintendo consoles that they have some building games in them. So there's the mini NES, which is like the 8-bit Nintendo, and also the mini SNES. Uh, which is like the mini Super Nintendo. So we were just pretty much playing that stuff <laughs> throughout the whole tour, you know, with all those classic games. Of course, there are some guys in the band who also enjoy the more modern games like PlayStation 4 and stuff like that. But you know, that that's too new, and you know, I, I don't understand anything about it. We just enjoy when we can just play some like Super Mario or Mega Man or Castlevania, Castlevania or stuff like that. You know, that's that's the best stuff. Can we in the future also expect some music based on Nintendo games, maybe? Or? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for having us. And check out the album when it comes out. And always stay tuned for Beast and Black News. And come to the shows. Yeah, indeed. So see you. Or else.